Um, so now we have five uh, one minute lightning talks, um, which I'm going to show here. And the first is Dimitri, Dimitri Vera. So please go ahead. I will be taking the time here, please. Hi everybody, my name is Dimitri Veras and I was a co-author on the following paper that Tiago Campante led about uh, constraining the stellar parameters for two known red giant host stars. Now many members of the ExoStar program are actually co-authors on this paper, but my role was to compute the fate of the planets in these systems. And the results are actually quite interesting because if the star is an RGB star, then the current parameters can be explained easily. However, if the star is, a clump, is in the clump, then it's actually quite difficult to explain the current planetary parameters. So in this way, computing the planetary fate is a, is a way to actually help constrain the stellar evolution. Thank you. Thank you so much, Denise. That was very nice. Um, and the next one is by Jake Clark. Please, Jake, go ahead. Hey everyone, my name is Jay Clark. Um, I'm from the University of Southern Queensland, and for the last three years, I've been curating the Galar Test Catalog. Now, Galar is the Galactic Archaeology with Hermes Survey, trying to find the sun's brothers and sisters in the southern sky. And uh, I've been able to put an exoplanetary spin on that data to be able to calculate the stellar radius, mass, age, luminosity, and habitable zones for over 47,000 stars. Um, and not only do we have physical parameters for um, these stars, we also have chemical parameters as well for up to uh, 23 abundances for each star. And not only that, but we also have abundance ratios. Now, these abundance ratios are crucial for disentangling the mass radius degeneracy that we have with rocky worlds. So with this catalog, if you find a, a tiny rocky world orbiting around one of these stars, um, you can then calculate how large would its ice sheet be what its mantle be comprised of, how much of its mass would be contained with this iron core. So then we can prioritize for follow up with the likes of James Webb and um, with the Roman Space Telescope. So we can etch a little bit closer to answering humankind's grandest mystery, are we truly alone? That's it. Thank you so much, uh, Jay. The next one is uh, Joshua Penzer, please go ahead. All right. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, so uh, this is a little bit of a uh, side note. Um, oh, as we know, it's really important to understand the physical properties and environmental properties of stars in order to understand the properties of their planets. NASA is planning on a suite of uh, missions that are going to be spending a lot of time and effort investigating individual exoplanets for direct imaging, for uh, atmospheric spectroscopy. And it's going to be important for us to have a comprehensive understanding of both the physical and environmental properties of the host stars. That includes everything from mass radius effective temperature to composition, um, uh, the presence of spots and activity, the presence of line of sight companions and bound companions, full spectra from the ultraviolet all the way through the IR, and time series uh, of uh, uh, observations, both photometric, spectroscopic, and activity indicators over time to understand the context of these planets. We have formed a SAG, a science analysis group, as part of the NASA ExoPad program. Um, we are still uh, welcoming new members, um, and we'd love to have, uh, have additional people join us to uh, define the parameters needed and to define the, uh, uh, the scope of the archive needed for this. Uh, I'm leading this project along with Chris Stark and Natalie Hinkle, and we'd love to have uh, more participants. Thank you, Josh. Uh, next one is Theron Carmichael. Please go ahead. All right, thank you. Hey, everyone. My name is Theron Carmichael. I'm a grad student at Harvard University. Uh, this will be a slightly different uh, topic here, but so uh, for my PhD, I'm working on the detection and characterization of transiting brown dwarves. Uh, we look to those because specifically we can get a precise mass and radius uh, from the nature of them transiting. And we are using those to uh, benchmark substellar mass radius isotherms that I'm showing here in this plot. So in addition to a precise ma mass and radius, uh, some of these brown dwarfs also have precise to determine ages. So one of the ones that I want to highlight here is the one shown in the filled in circle in blue, that is uh, TOI811B. Uh, this is uh, the host star to this brown dwarf, uh, we've been able to uh, constrain its age using gyrochronology. And that is the, this is the first time uh, that we've been able to uh, use gyrochronology and apply it to the transiting brown dwarf population in this way. 
And TY811B is particularly special because uh, it is a young brown dwarf, so it lets us better benchmark some of these younger mass uh, radius substellar isochrons here. So uh, we have a paper upcoming soon that will be uh, submitted very shortly. But yeah, in the meantime, if you have any questions about this, please feel free to reach out to me. Thank you. Thank you very much, Darren. And the last uh, poster of the session is Jason Eastman. Please go ahead. Hi, thanks for having me here. Uh, so today I want to talk to you about uh, the work that I've done characterizing the TOI host stars using ExoFast. So ExoFast is a code that uh, can fit for um, planets uh, and stars and radial velocity and all sorts of things that, that you might have. Uh, but it can also just do the star alone. And so um, I want to show you the results that I've done on just the, the sample of 2,000 uh, host stars uh, from, the te from all the test objects of interest. On the left, the upper left here, you see uh, an HR diagram just from using the tick values. And you see there's a fair amount of scatter there. It looks pretty good. And, it's, and if you're just looking at uh, a new star for the first time, this is probably what you're going to look at. Um, but if you take the, just the photometry uh, from all sky catalogs and the parallax from Gaia and uh, the extinction maps from, uh, from Schlegel, uh, and then run a, a joint SED fit and um, uh, an evolutionary model fit, you can actually get quite a bit tighter. Um, and so you can just see that the improvement from over the tick versus uh, XOFAST2 is significant. The uncertainties are somewhere around a, a log G uncertainty of, of 0.03 dex uh, and, uh, an and an uncertainty in the temperature of about 100 Kelvin. Uh, and uh, you, you might be concerned that that's a little too tight. Um, Jamie Tayer, who's here, and uh, a graduate student at Ohio State, Diego uh, Godoy Rivera, have independently used ExoFast 2 to, to do a sample of um, uh, an astroseismic sample comparing to their ExoFast 2 results. And they, this is what's shown in the bottom right here. Uh, and they, they find a systematic offset of 0.01 dex with a scatter of 0 0.0, I think, 4 dex. Uh, so, so the agreement is very, very good. Okay. Thank you so much, uh, Jason. And well, that's the last presentation of this session. So thanks all the speakers. Uh, so another virtual clap for everyone. Uh